Do you want to just start it then? Yeah, do we want to do the um, uh, yeah, I reckon. theme? Yeah, I get it up? Yeah, you, it up. you go for it. I think if we do this again, I'm going to need like less good headphones because they're just, I feel like I'm, my ears are suffocating. But it's fine. Uh... <laughs> Two seconds. Here we go. Let's have it on right now, please. Also, I have a thought of a question. That's Ooh. Fine. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will try and stop with one on the spot. Or if not, we'll just crop it in. Hello. Hello, and welcome to Two Queers. One pod. I'm Bridie. I'm Imogen. We're and doing, doing this on Zoom. Yes, a bit unconventionally this time, or as the year's gone, quite conventionally, I suppose. But um, The full 2020 experience. Indeed, indeed. So yeah, uh, we went into lockdown, I think, on the 2nd or the 3rd of November, and today is the, I want to say the 8th. Yeah. So, so it's... um. Yeah, how are you doing, Immy, in the whole shebang? Also, I'm just going to be fiddling with my headphones. That's better. You know, aren't as, as good as can be expected. It's been a bonfire night here in, in the UK all of this week, apparently. And um, yeah, it does tend like to go everyone wrong. else's pets hiding under the sofa. <laughs> yeah, luckily where I live, I haven't heard it too much because there's no like there's nowhere to do fireworks around me that's super super that's close true. but I know by you you've got some fields and greens and whatnot so it's oh no it's just people doing it in their back gardens oh that's safe yeah it's super <laughs> safe and like it's really built up around here so the echo is just unreal it, yes not having a not having a great time no but if you listen to episode three of the podcast Cast, winter I was brains. listening to it before yeah. uh, before we started recording because I, I wanted done to that. remember what we talked about because I yeah. think today we're going to be talking about self care. Indeed. So yeah, we're kind of we we covered um, a bit in that episode how we kind of dealt with living in lockdown and our little. Uh, we came up with a few like self care tips and tricks, but now we're going to go full in. Into yeah, absolutely it. everything we do to keep ourselves going. Yeah, with the kind of preface that we don't always manage it, but we try our best, and that's absolutely that's the important thing. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's what we're, we're all about here at Two Quiz One Pod. Just doing what we can. Yes, doing exactly. what we can to survive. Exactly. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to to bring up was the Instagram account at Make Daisy Chains or Hannah Daisy mm-hmm. on Instagram who is an occupational therapist for the NHS, but she kind of gained popularity on Instagram by doing the hashtag boring self-care, mm-hmm. which I have the zine. <gasps> Look at um, that. To refer back to at any point if we run out of stuff to talk about. Yeah. Because one of the stuff, one of the things that she is really passionate about is that self-care has become one of these things that has been about having to like, buy things Hmm. and having to um be all sort of aesthetically pleasing and very pinteresty like treat yourself yeah bubble baths and uh yeah bath bombs and those are the only things i can ever think of with with that sort of self-care but she's just like wiping your ass is self-care yeah you know that's that's anything you do to care for yourself is self-care um and so she goes through things like making doctor's appointments brushing your teeth Washing your bedding. Three things that I really struggle with. Me too. Um, and so she is like a constant reminder that those things are wins and those yeah. things are achievements. For um, sure. I had a conversation with a, a family member not so long ago about um, how they thought it was really gross um, that nude deodorant were advertising that they worked for seven days and they were like oh no we can't be um you know advocating for poor personal hygiene during a pandemic um you know who doesn't shower for a week and I was like (laughs) um 
yeah this and, guy uh, yeah me. and it's 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 us and it's a lot of people that we know who also sort of struggle with that kind of basic well it, you you call it basic but it isn't always because it is just huge deal and then if you think about anyone with any sort of um like physical disabilities exactly. as well as well as mental or um i suppose neurological like the the brain to body connection thing which yeah. is which is my, which is my whole issue um I, yeah. it's, it's kind of like your ableism once showing a week sharon is a win. <laughs> once a week is a real win yeah, for me yeah. twice a week is my absolute peak but yeah, yeah people that wash their hair and, and like shower every day it couldn't be me it's also it not, not good me. for your hair to shower every day so yeah, i hear skin and stuff. so I mean, sure if you're doing like hard labor and covered in in mud and stuff then sure you know give yourself a rinse off but mm. yeah i just you know having a shower is a win for me but that is my whole day yeah that's like the only activity i can do for a day is yeah is having a shower it's um it just it takes a lot it's a whole sensory experience like a nice one yeah a sensory onslaught with the temperatures and the, the textures and smells and all of that kind of stuff and if you factor in any sort of like shaving or in my mm-hmm. case like bleaching my hair mm-hmm. um like that's that's a full day yeah no it's an, it's definitely difficult especially when you know in lockdown especially there would be days on end where i barely got out of bed and like you say like shout going for a shower felt like the activity of the day so like part like i was kind of I would kind of put it off until either the last minute or kind of wake up and go, Oh my God, like that's the thing I could do today and kind of like super savor it. I remember the time um, earlier this year when I went to go for a shower and someone had moved out of my house and all my shower products were gone. <gasps> yeah, and that just felt that. I was like, I had, <laughs> it looked, literally took me like 45 minutes to um, psych myself up to go for a shower and then disappointment, but it was fine. And like, in the house that I'm living in now the shower's on like the very bottom floor and I'm right in the attic um so sometimes if I'm not feeling very great it just feels like such a task to like get up and like go all the way downstairs and it's just yeah it's but some days I just go oh I need a shower and then I just go and it's really um but it is definitely it does feel like one of those kind of basic self-care things but it actually is difficult to always remember to do even though it's technically free, as in you don't have to buy anything to go and have a shower. Yeah, you know. provided that you know you live in a house and you have a shower. And I know yeah. loads of people that live in flats and stuff that don't that don't have a shower. Like they, I know loads of people that have baths but no shower in that house. And I'm like, that would make it even landlords? more difficult for me. Yeah, who, ridiculous. Who are these landlords? Like our shower's been. Well, my house has just had persistent leaks hmm. for like well over a year now. And our shower is absolutely on the brink of collapse. And I truly don't know what any of us are going to do when that goes. So I have to have the plumbers in this week to try and get them to sort that out. Because that's that's been an issue since like last November. Because Mm. rented accommodation. Yes. Um, But yeah, so like showering is a big deal. It's basically Shower chat. (laughs) The the underlying um, thing for me is that, and anyone that says otherwise, is wrong yeah they're wrong and they also just it's just kind of a clear indication of not fully understanding certain mental health and physical health issues like um mental health being like depression and things it literally stops you moving a lot like most a a lot of the time and And i think like with a lot of these these things when i come up against people with these sorts of opinions like at first i'm frustrated but then my like better angels swoop in and they're just like i'm really glad that you don't understand that you that you don't have first-hand experience yeah. of this or that no one super close to you has first-hand experience of how yes things that may come under the umbrella of basic self-care mm-hmm. like um showering any kind of washing brushing your teeth eating three meals a day, drinking enough water, changing your bedding, all of these things. Like, I'm really pleased for you if these aren't issues. Yeah. Um, like, that's that's great. Unfortunately, your experience is not universal. 
Mm -hmm. And then you think about like, yeah, people that live in any sort of like marginalized life and poverty and that sort of stuff, then access to running water, access to a home. And you yeah. know, like if you really like go into it, then actually the, the amount of people that have the ability to like shower every day, or I've known people that the shower like twice a day sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really? Like, I just don't know where they find the time. I mean, I know it, they're all kind of, you know, half an hour tasks. gym people. I reckon it's gym yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I feel like with a lot of that stuff, it kind of, there's a lot of time that it takes to kind of psych yourself up to do these things. And that, and, you know, sometimes you don't manage to do it um, and that's still okay. But just, and then I think another element of self-care in that, in that, part is to if you if you wake up and you just can't go for a shower even though you might have planned to the night before and you just you physically can't do it I think another, the next step is more like mental self-care and kind of just just talk, talking to yourself and just letting yourself know that like that's fine we'll try again later because I think it's really easy to fall into patterns where if you where if you don't um you know follow these hang on I lost my train of thought because my hearing's gone funny let me just go back well, it's really hard to give well you, it's really easy to give yourself a hard time if you don't live yeah. up to the self-imposed limitations or these expectations and, and things and it's it's really important to go easy on yourself and be like yeah we'll try this again later and you know it's not the end of the world and also I think sometimes if I have plans to have a shower or something on the day and I that's beyond me mm -hmm that's almost like at, at points that's been like my whole day ruined yeah so like oh that means I can't do anything I'm a piece of shit yeah spiral, spiral, yeah, yeah, spiral. yeah 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 um that was kind of that, my point is that like yeah I could, I it could just goes that was where you were going yeah you it. kind of make things worse for yourself by then getting down but it's it's and then that like you say just it creates a spiral effect yeah and it's like okay so I can't do that today what can I do can I wash my face? Can I brush my teeth? Are all of these things out of the window? Can I have a glass of water? Like sort of going smaller and smaller and smaller until you find something that you can do. And yeah. then that helps for just general sense of self and like, oh, well, I did achieve something. I had a glass of water, a cup of tea, yeah. a piece of toast, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. And it's, it's building yourself back up. Um, which is why narratives around general laziness and stuff like that, I think are just generally super unhelpful Yeah, because no one who believes that they're really lazy and like worthless and a piece of shit has ever, that's never made anything easier for anyone. No. And so maintaining these narratives around people with like no motivation being worthless or whatever, it's kind of a, a self fulfilling prophecy kind of thing if you tell someone that they're a piece of shit and they're worthless and they're lazy and disgusting for not showering every day then it's, yeah it's kind of like relative to what though you know mm. yeah for sure so, for sure everyone just needs to keep their opinions to themselves but <laughs> um not how the internet works. <laughs> we're here with no. a podcast where we are distinctly not keeping our opinions to ourselves but we have nicer ones <laughs> not a friendlier and ever so slightly less judgmental mental <laughs> ever so slightly um yeah so i've written down to kind of compare what self-care was when i was younger or how i what i assumed that to be versus what i would say it was now and i think the term like self-care wasn't really a thing it, it's more of like a, it's it, i think it's come with kind of your in the instagram part of the world um but I think looking after yourself is the kind of, you know, that's just the phrase that we would have grown up with. And to me, I was kind of raised with the impression that kind of eat well and exercise, that's all you have to do. Um, Wouldn't that be great? That would be, well, kind of, but like, I don't really like to exercise and I'm not always super great with my eating. So my point was but like, that like... But if that was all it was, oh, yeah. because my, my bugbear with that is you get told that that is all that it is yeah and then you finally get into a place where you are really working hard at those sorts of things and then you still feel yes. like shit that, and that's and like, like the it was worst a scam. yeah it was a scam that's like the worst it's like me like yoga and mindfulness and meditation and stuff like every doctor i've had for the past 15 years has said like 
Oh yeah, they, well, I mean, maybe not 15 years. Doctors haven't been recommending it for that long. But as soon as doctors got on to the whole yoga mindfulness thing, people have been telling me to do it, and I'm like, I do. Yeah. And you know what? I'm still autistic. <laughs> I'm still depressed. I'm still anxious. I've still got fucking PTSD. Yeah. Like it hasn't solved no. anything, and that is a bit shit. And important caveat. Dear listener, if these things have worked for you, I'm really happy for you. Genuinely, I'm so pleased that they've worked for you. I need you to understand they don't necessarily work for everyone. No, I know that's your that, ma- a massive frustration of yours is whenever you, especially, for some reason, it's it's you. I don't know if it's like the people that follow you on, on social media or something, but you always, whenever you kind of speak out about uh, mental health especially when you have some kind of part about medication you've always got someone in your messages being like have you tried yoga and it's just like have you tried yoga I need you to have stop. you tried uh, vitamin d which i always is one of those things i always want them to mean dick yeah <laughs> because that would be so much funnier <laughs> like it's the only time when unsolicited like sexual advances would be better than what they actually are yeah um but yeah, it's just my my thing. But yeah, going back to your like diet and exercise thing, I do think again, there's a lot to be said for them. You know, making sure you're getting like sufficient nutrients and moving your body and all of that kind of stuff. However, it doesn't fix everything. No. And also, if you're in the pits of a fucking like depression spiral or at the height of an anxiety attack, mm-hmm. neither one of those things is going to help, and you're not no, going to exactly. be in a fit state to access either of them anyway exactly and especially like um this time of year like so i work until five o'clock and then it's dark i'm not going to be mm. bloody doing you know keep fit classes in my bedroom because of i've got housemates um i c- can't go to the gym because it's locked down i don't run um so you it's like what, safe to run. what do not you want me way. to do what do you want me to do and also like with regards to the kind of healthy eating thing so yeah i kind of struggle with maintaining a healthy uh especially under like great moments of stress um it hasn't been a diagnosed but it is like a disordered eating thing that i have so it is difficult for me um to maintain like a three meals a day kind of balanced thing um still working on that but what's really changed for me this year is that and I think it was something that we had a conversation over lockdown one, which was where you basically, where I was just being like, I'm, cause when I get stressed, I sort of overeat and I get quite like, um, I guess obsessive about it. And I was, I think I reached out to you about it and you basically said like, you're still, you're feeding yourself and you're keeping yourself going. Yeah, absolutely. And although in your mind you might see it as unhealthy or, you know, you've got all the brain gremlins doing the thing um i think acknowledging that although it's not a pattern that i'm necessarily happy with i'm still like i am still kind of giving myself energy and and like that was really really helpful but yeah and some some t- i feel like when if i'm not doing like the, what i would consider the kind of perfect amount of exercise and having a balanced diet um and I feel like shit. I'm always just like, oh, well, maybe if you did do those things, it might. Mm. And then I, but then I do, and then it doesn't. <laughs> I think what's what's particularly difficult, and this is something that I've I've talked to my mum about a fair bit recently, because it's it's not necessarily super obvious if you're not impacted by it. But all narratives around healthy eating and exercise are based around weight loss. Mm-hmm they aren't based on actual good health about how to keep yourself mentally in like a good place physically in you know whatever a good place is for you Mm -hmm. it all comes back to weight loss and that immediately is massively fucking triggering so I just don't go anywhere near any of it yeah when I was little I had a really massive interest in nutrition like mm-hmm. I thought it was really interesting. Like I love learning about like what different vitamins did in the body and like micronutrients and all of these sorts of things. But then I became a teenager and developed mm. all sorts of unhealthy relationships with food. 
and now I just I have to be really careful about how much I think about it or yeah, look into too. it and stuff and it is food is definitely one of my like hashtag special interests but I have to be so careful with it and it's the same with yoga and stuff like yoga pilates all of these things like I do enjoy them Mm -hmm. but I have to be really careful with how much I do them and how much I engage with them because of all of the narrative around quote-unquote health yeah which isn't about health it's about weight loss yeah that's weight maintenance and like that kind of stuff and also there's this whole thing which is that you don't have to be healthy to be worthy yeah like even if you're and that's something that I've had to it's really hard to like get that into come to you. terms yeah. with because I have been like coming to terms with the whole being disabled thing and mm-hmm. not feeling like half a person because of being disabled and then within that learning that I believe that people have inherent value whether or not they are healthy whether or not they are contributing in a financial way to society and I know I I banged on about that in episode three um but it's it's a really huge it's a really huge thing that like so many of these things that are about how to keep you feeling as good as you can have these flip sides and so you can be going into something with all the best intentions about how to how to keep yourself feeling as okay as you can but it's really hard to not fall down these rabbit holes of like guilt and shame and societal sure. pressures and beauty standards and, and all of these things. And so it's like, yes, in an ideal world, we would all eat what our bodies need and what we enjoy. Mm-hmm. And we would do like joyful movement that like keeps the bits of our bodies moving that need to for health reasons and all of that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, that's not, the way we're taught about things we're taught about like calorie counting and Mm -hmm. not to eat carbs and then the things that none of these things stay consistent in the narrative for a long period of time either like in both of our lifetimes we both had family members that have been into like dieting yes and stuff and they're never consistent I remember one that a family member that reminded where she wasn't allowed to eat fruit and I just yes the sugar yeah and I just remember being like no no whatever it is it can't be bad to eat fruit like it can't that can't be bad for you yeah and it's yeah but yeah you know leading into that so yeah my um grandmother throughout her whole life um not refused but like didn't eat meals if so if she ordered like a jack of potato and it came with butter on it she wouldn't eat it didn't want gravy on anything like I thought it was because she didn't like food being like wet um but it was actually yeah but it was actually like she had been told that um all these like kind of extras that you put onto food are useless um so she just avoided them all her life and um, she did pass away earlier this year but the week that she died when she was eating in the hospital she literally drank gravy out of a mug you know, she slo- and we were all just there, just like that was me doing a very like I don't know how you describe that, like oh face, face. Um, for the non Patreon subscribers who won't get to see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, and that kind of just made me go like, wow, okay, well if someone who you know has refused their entire seventy five years of life, and then they know that they're on their way out, and then they're just like, give me all the gravy and butter. Yeah, you know, some people, it would be like hardcore drugs. Yeah. Uh, Your grandmother, butter and gravy. Exactly. quite frankly, I'm fully on board with that. Yeah. If you listen to the, one of the most recent episodes of Off Menu with the woman that started Oaxaca. Thomasina Myers, I did. Yeah. I loved it. Or she had a soapbox to stand on about (laughs) butter. And I want everyone to see it. Yeah, everyone go and listen because it was just so much. Butter is good support. for you. Yeah. There are important fats and oils and acids, and it's just, it's a great time. I really love that because. Great time. And I, love I, her. I, I said and I've this. I've never been to Oaxaca. I have. And I desperately want oh. to now. Bloody love Mexico. Delicious. Food. Me and my friend Phoebe went um, 
oh yeah year before last or last year can't remember but it was amazing um I remember I had some kind of like plantain taco thing and like a tequila drink but it was fantastic really really recommend um while we were talking well while you were talking about your kind of when you're online and you're getting kind of bombarded with you know weight loss and exercise targeted ads that made me think oh yeah that's another bugbear of mine isn't it and the thing is the thing is every time i'm like but why are you targeting me i am not like anyway that's another story um but it it's reminded me of a it's yeah, our demographic and it. that makes me fucking angry it's like, well i always see them a lot you can try but i'm not gonna fall for it this time bitch and they're just like oh swipe. but lockdown one you know if we want if we want to get real i fucking did <laughs> yeah me too and like i've i've struggled with with disordered eating and, and stuff like that for a long long time and i really did think that i was on the way out yeah of that kind of stuff and like changing the narratives in my head and, and things like that I think there's a way um, to trick yourself that you're not, you know, when you download your like My Fitness Pal app and you're like, but I'm not, it's worst. not disordered eating. I'm just keeping I'm just track. Aware. And that just, just you know, allows it to kind of snowball. It absolutely um, does. The one I got was Noom because it was like, it's not that. a diet. And I was just like, interesting. <laughs> and it fucking got me for like the trial period or whatever. But then it's something like £150. And fortunately, £150 got me to go. Oh no! Yeah, you know, if no. we're going to sabotage our mental health, we're going to do it for free. Thank yeah. you very much. I'm not I'm going to pay for your pounds. industry. Yeah. Which, oh, it makes me so cross. It really makes me angry. But I still get them. Like even though I signed up to it, I still get the same adverts like multiple times in every YouTube video. Did you know though that um, I read recently that or heard on her podcast, um, Jamila Jamil was involved in so for younger children. I assume they work it out because you have to put in your age when you sign up for these social media platforms. But she passed some kind of legislation where these kids won't have the targeted ads on their pages, which I think is so great. Yeah, that's really um, great. It's like the, um, they stopped, I mean, this is kind of like the flip side of it, but like they stopped advertising fast food and diet apps on yeah. TV during kids' programs when we were younger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember a guy that I dated a couple of years ago and it was sort of the beginning of the end when we had this conversation but we were watching like Jurassic World on TV on like a Sunday afternoon and it was really nice and we were just sat there with his housemates I was doing some embroidery it felt very wholesome and then there was an ad break and it, there was a what's like there's like that fat bindy drug thing that you can buy from Superdrug I can't remember what it's called. I don't know. But it's got like a green and orange label. There was one of those. There was a Slim Fast advert. And there was the WWE, like new Weight Watchers rebranded yeah. advert. All And this was like half past three on a Sunday. And I was like, this is family viewing time. This is fucking disgusting. Absolutely. And I turned to him and I was just like, this is fucking disgusting, don't you think? And he, he honestly had no idea what I was on about. And even when I explained it, he was like... Um, and why is that a bad thing? And I was like, um, for me, that can be really scary when you're when you go to speak to someone about it, and they just it just doesn't com not compute, but it just doesn't like get into them as much as as you or it's just yeah, it makes me go. He's kind very of like, much like a food for fuel type person, anyway. Okay, and so, but then he was he was quite concerned with his body image, and so it was it was that kind of thing where I was just like, no, this is the this is about you because yeah. you are living proof that these things work right yeah and like you know you go to the gym like multiple times a day for these reasons and you know you get worried and you can't fit into your jeans and all of these things that are super normal mm -hmm. but are products of this like fat phobic and and scary ableist eurocentric beauty standards and body standards and stuff and it's it's all bollocks yeah. go to the gym if it makes you feel good not because you want to look a certain way yeah i think I think realizing that um, is probably one of my ultimate sort of self-care tips is if you can just, and I, I'm, I, th I feel like some element of exposing yourself to it is involved, but if you can manage to kind of really get into like, you know, we pay for this industry to survive because of our insecurities and just kind of go, actually, no, I, I don't subscribe to that. I think that's one of the best things you can do for yourself and it does take time and it does 
you realize which elements of yourself it affects and you have to kind of work on them and, oops, and chip, chip at them one by one. But that, you know, this is another element of self-care, which is setting boundaries. And that can be done in loads of different types of ways, be it, like we've just said, kind of blocking out or trying your best to block out these kind of societal pressures, um, whether that's with like friends or family members that don't make you very happy or, or partners as well um, or employers, you know, people in general. Um, and just kind of setting, even if, you know, no one's streamlining like social media as well, because that's the stuff yes, that we can speak. And not even just social media, but like print media. So like I stopped buying certain magazines, even though I'm a magazine hoarder in a very big way. I have magazines going back to like 2000. Coming out your ears. <laughs> I do. The books and magazines, absolutely my kryptonite. But streamlining what information you put into yourself and yeah. like the slant and the spin that it's coming from yeah it's really important and so people will say that it's a social media generation but i have physical evidence but it's that, and also it's that today the that, people you know, that are telling us that since the 50s yeah the people that are telling us that had something to do with the fact that social media exists now exactly. it's like i'm sorry we didn't build it like we didn't make this i mean i can't say that now because now we're both you know in our tw- mid-20s we have so probably have one of our peers made something yeah, yeah um but for the younger people to kind of blame them and also it's that whole thing of stop being in your phone so much but you don't want to look up and look around at the world right now because it's a fucking mess so leave, yeah, right. leave everyone alone you know it's not a crisis it's just well you know in some areas it it might be a crisis but not for everyone and that's what we were but talking yeah, about yesterday setting boundaries is really sorry no yeah, sorry okay. um when I was kind of saying to you, like, I feel like I'm spending too much time on my phone, but all my friends are in my phone. Um, and that's just an unfortunate kind of weighing thing, especially for this year. Like, I feel like we've had to learn more about and practice self-care more this year than any previous that I've experienced. Um, yeah, there's had, there's had to be a massive increase in education around these things. So obviously, like, people with um, disabilities and uh, people like, Hannah Daisy that was talking about at the beginning yeah. like occupational therapists and people that work in this area have been shouting from the rooftops for years trying to be taken seriously where yeah. people have been like namby pamby wishy washy what is this self-care bullshit it's because and you know what it's because these people I assume were just too damn busy to mm. kind of stop and go fuck I actually could benefit from from just having that little pat on the shoulder for just doing the the the, the thing yeah, no, everyone has to do it. Everyone has to be looking after themselves and finding the ways to keep themselves ticking over that aren't their daily kind of grinding routine that doesn't give you enough space to, to think. Yeah. But boundaries are super important. And like, I think that's something that we've both worked on an awful lot since being friends with each other. Yeah, definitely. Not like necessarily with each other, but yeah. with other people <laughs> in our external lives. For sure. Um, and it's really it's really hard um to set boundaries with people that you care about but it's something that I think we've both learned a little bit more about how to do and about how to ask people to like not talk to you like that or not talk about certain things when you're around or like that you don't have to be constantly available for people and I think that's a massive thing with the with the increase of technology and communication and stuff is that we do all feel like we have to be at the beck and call of everyone all of the time Mm -hmm. And that's that's really hard feeling like you do have to be available for people because I'm I'm got a big thing about like if I say to someone well you know where I am I'm always there like always there for you sort of thing I have to fucking mean it like mm-hmm. but then that means that I I don't and we were talking about this with a with a friend the other day about how if you really love someone it's really hard to hold those lines yeah and so someone could phone you at four a.m. and even though they've they've really like burn their bridges with you or something there's still like that compassionate soft and mushy core that goes I still want you to be okay yeah no exactly <laughs> I, need, I need you to be all right and I can't be the one that's responsible for you not being all right and that's and that's a huge thing particularly with communities that have prominent mental health problems 
Mm -hmm. and stuff is just learning what to take responsibility for and what to not take responsibility for and that other people's actions are on them not on us but then our way of dealing with those things is on us and that's that's a really hard line to hold it's really difficult and I think also kind of coming out of school and making new sort of friendships and stuff as adults can be quite challenging because and it's it's one of those things where you don't you kind of have to come with all this kind of not baggage but I guess baggage and history about yourself and your like sort of past friendships and things and I think when you and I became friends it felt like such an easy kind of process whereas when I had come out of school went to uni for a bit dosed around for a bit la 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 I find it really difficult to make like solid friendships just because I don't know I feel I know, it's, it's more of like a anxiety thing I guess where I've I've always felt a little bit like on the edge of stuff but that's more that I keep myself on the edge but I also at the same time feel like I'm not being pushed out anyway you get it um but yeah and I think when when you're an adult you stop being able to make friends purely due to proximity for sure and even in a workplace you don't necessarily have the immediate common factors that you do in school Mm. of age and interests and um you know families like you all live at home with your family or generally you all live at home with your family and you're all doing the same lessons and so your day-to-day stuff is kind of the same but then every step outside of that you lose more and more of those things that bind you Mm -hmm. and so the people that you choose to spend time with you really actively have to choose to spend time with them and you have to actively like them and that was a, a huge thing for lockdown of, and, and all of this year, really, um, certainly for me, because I don't have a job to go out to. Mm. So I, I really stuck to the, the lockdown rules more than most people because I didn't feel like I kind of had any excuse not to because I didn't mm. have a job to go to. Um, and so anyone that I chose to meet like there was this this weighted risk attached to it and so it really limited the people that I spent time with and like the people that I spent time with it really felt like they had to be fucking worth it (laughs) um yeah that's you yeah that's that's you baby um but yeah and it's so and I find and also it has to be people with similar priorities because we've had such massive like political moments this year we've all kind of been a bit under a microscope in regards to our priorities Mm -hmm. and our politics and stuff and so it's been it's been a good time to cut people out in a way if obviously our things don't align because you know if people are talking about how vulnerable people just need to like stay in the houses so we can all get back on with their lives and I'm like oh immediately absolutely don't want anything to do with you yeah Um, exactly and sort of other other people it's been easier to just be like "Mm, no I'm staying inside I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna see you yeah and that's that's being an adult I think is you have to make these active decisions on who you have relationships with and that is both freeing and quite a big responsibility because then you still have to go out of your way to find the right people and that's exactly. something that we we did last year we we put ourselves out there and dabbled in the bristol gay scene and that was yeah. fucking wonderful that was wonderful and i hope that they're all having amazing days because and i just can't wait to hopefully in the near well probably far future but have that back at some point because that was that was really lovely because we kind of where we where we're from we kind of feel like there isn't much of a i suppose scene for us here but that's more just just standard of a kind of small town I feel rather than like a big city where it's just got more space for these kind of to hold these things um but no yeah hang on I forgot my fucking train of thought again two seconds it's coming talking about choosing the people that you turn (laughs) you make like strong relationships I had a really good point on the outside Wait. Sorry. Breathe. No. Hang on. <laughs> um, I'm nearly there. No, it's gone. It's gone forever. Never mind. 
It'll come back. It's alright. I will just if it comes back, I'll just shout. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Um. Yeah. Never mind. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know how long we've been talking for either. Hang on. Sorry, Harry. You're gonna have to cut all this out if you can. <laughs> oh, 43 minutes. But I think we started about five minutes in. So that's cool. Oh, I remembered. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Um. Yeah. So just part of the whole setting boundaries as self-care thing as well so I think you us and our friend Lana as a three we've kind of established this thing where we'll make a plan and if you know one of us can't make that plan or two of us or or you know it's learning to like not it's just learning to be like oh, oh that's absolutely fine and I well, it's not even learning I think that just comes from the kind of person that you are and not being like super sort of mad or disappointed if by these kind of not taking consider, it personally yeah not taking it personally is, is, is exactly it and I think it's really important to have especially when you've got kind of an anxious brain or a depressed brain or like I'm avoiding the word like unreliable because it's not what it is <laughs> but it really kind of mean. in a nice way unreliable um a sensitive but, brain yeah but yeah exactly and just not having that kind of being able to make plans but if it has to be rearranged just going like that's fine we can rearrange but also like if that's something that really bothers you then communicating with your friends that like if you do need to cancel plans with me I would really appreciate it if you gave me like at least an hour's notice or two hours notice or whatever because that will mean that I have enough time to rearrange myself and like my day and so it doesn't mean that I kind of lose a day in a sense from not being able to do stuff and I'm I am terrible for last minute cancellations because sometimes I will just get to the door and my brain and my body will just go <laughs> no you tried and like, yeah. yeah and like I I have to be very upfront about that with people because I know how disappointing that is and so we collectively have come to an understanding that we give as much notice as we can yeah we apologize if we can't give as much notice as we would like to but yeah. generally speaking we all know that it's not anything that we should take personally none exactly. of us are avoiding each other none of us are you know talking shit behind the other's back yeah. and it's just it's our learning all of that school shit quite frankly for sure people are like that when they're when they're kids because we're all confrontational we have birth. nothing else to do we didn't have we didn't have tablets <laughs> <laughs> we just started kids are nicer to each other walls. now i don't know it's in, it's i i so a part of the whole and I know what I just said about kids always being in their phones and like leave them alone but part of that kind of makes me nervous because I just don't I just don't feel like we had the same we had the same like under, like exposure to oh god I'm knocking all of my pens um exposure to like technology growing up and I'm a little bit like mm. are you have you got like a robot brain and it's that <laughs> But that's a whole other story. Well, yeah, I think it's kind of maybe messed with us sufficiently. So I do wonder about younger people. But anyway, yeah. like you say, that's a whole other that's a whole other kettle of fish. Exactly. Um I'm just So yeah, self care that we have is Yeah, we haven't talked yeah. anything about like cosmetic self care. Um but no, we also no, do been... a lot of that. But it's it's been like <laughs> showering if you can, mm-hmm. um brushing your teeth, washing your face, washing your hands do wash your hands though we're in a pandemic we, yeah washing your if you hands, take anything please, from this for year. the love of god keep washing your hands the rest of you couldn't give a fuck mate but like please wash your and hands may i suggest some dry shampoo if you can't make oh power. yeah um, Gosh, i keep i'm still trying to look for a, an unscented like one and i'm sure it's not good um we Which had one is it? it's little <laughs> oh but my uh we it's recently nice. yeah, what is it Clean, California Breeze. I haven't been to California, but I am assuming that's correct. Um, yeah, obviously. My friend came over for Halloween before lockdown and used this, but to make her hair look like Beetlejuice. Oh, so yeah. I maybe not recommend this brand, but um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not still looking for an unscented and like an aerosol one so if anyone has any recommendations yeah i imagine then you let us know at two quiz one pod on instagram (laughs) (laughs) any of your hacks for um for self-care or lack thereof powder bit of talc 
slap it on. Yeah, but I'd smell I have really nice. dark roots. And um, so that does look like dandruff almost immediately. Um, not that there's anything wrong with dandruff, but just it's not something that I would choose to add to my head. Yes. Um, so yeah, so shower if you can, wash what bits of you you can, but do wash your hands. Mm-hmm. Um, eat as varied and as nutritious a diet as you can manage, but don't stress about it if you can't. Yeah. Do a bit of moving around if you can, but also don't stress about it if you can't. Um, set some good boundaries with with people in your life. It's really hard. It absolutely sucks to do mm-hmm. it. Um, but the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Yeah. Um, that's our top four. Uh, I was self care. Tra- I was not keeping count. And then fifth one was dry shampoo. Yes. Fifth one's dry shampoo. So yes. top five self care tips: Bridey and Imogen sorted. <laughs> oh yeah made it um cool that was good lifestyle gurus here we come <laughs> and if you would like us to do one about cosmetic self-care we probably can talk for an hour about that as well so do let us know oh absolutely i have a lot to say about face masks as oh well. yeah face i masks, once worked bombs. in a spa back in the day may interest you oh, yeah may not but i know some shit about it face masks me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah that's one of my another one hashtag special interests because autism um so yeah so i know i know a shit ton about that and then we could get into crystals oh my god amazing um yeah we can go full pinterest on this um if you would like that but also (laughs) if you don't care we might do it anyway (laughs) yeah i was gonna say if you don't care skip that episode yeah (laughs) yeah amazing so do we do we have a question of the week this week um let me see if i wrote any down just edit this it's all fine i feel like <laughs> oh anyway um i do also highly recommend looking up at hannah days no fuck that's not her name try that again i also recommend looking up at make daisy chains on hmm. instagram because her art and everything that she does is incredibly life affirming and her cat is is super cute and she has foxes in her garden and oh yeah okay no i have a I have an idea. Um, so it was my turn to come up with question of the week this week and I didn't because I'm useless. No, I'm not. I'm great. <clears throat> um, <laughs> um, but I think it might be cool if instead we share like a few Instagram accounts that we yeah, like and I like nice a idea. little bit about why we like them. Um, so you just mentioned Hannah at Make Daisy Chains. Um, someone I really like is um, at Millie Keeps Going. Millie with a why i'm pretty sure we'll put all of these in the um, we will, yeah. episode I, I description will check. um but actually she posted something even last week that um was kind of the well no we already had the idea to do self-care this episode but it kind of i said to Imi, and it was just more about that kind of boring self-care and self uh personal hygiene and stuff and she's just very she's just one of those people on the internet that is very kind of candid and honest and really important when you're kind of filtering out um, what you're exposed to on, especially Instagram, I think filtering in those kind of accounts is really good Um, just because it kind of takes away that, you know, rose tinted lens of Instagram and how everything's perfect. Um, Because yeah, it kind of just shows a lot a much more like honest account of living with mental health issues what about you got another one i might go at anastasia dot tasu to sal the illustrator and and artist that we both we both love i love um and one day i would love to get her to interview her and get her on here (laughs) that would be incredible i did one of her workshops a couple of weeks ago Mm. and she's just such a babe but she does kind of doodly artwork that is very like sensitive and a bit is is very honest about about messy feelings and even though like because I know that she's in um a relationship and stuff but she'll still talk about like heartbreak and and stuff like that and she's just she's not shy to talk about messy feelings and difficult feelings and and having a bad day and there's nothing really like dramatic about it. It's all very calm. And it just, it makes me feel very 
like seen and understood yeah. and very much like not alone and there's a lot of stuff about kind of like noticing nice things in nature that I find really helpful yeah I really love her work I think you introduced me to her but she's I'm slightly obsessive wonderful yeah and it's just one of those ones where you're like oh I want a print of this to have on my like under my eyelids mm, yeah but yeah amazing cool well yeah like we said and also if we figure out how to do it for the video version of the podcast we might pop up little images here and there if that's possible I don't know yet so don't hold me to that but um we'll share some stuff um on the stories of sure. Instagram um when this episode comes out in a few weeks yes well cool. so when you're listening to it hopefully we will have sorted out a way <laughs> to see these these people's yeah we need to listen back and, and like oh, write so. down what we promised to do so I've been doing that. Rag. Oh yeah, I have, I have been making notes about the organisation. I even put a content warning on on this week's episode. I, I didn't quite, notice that. I was pleased that I'd I'd remember to do that. <laughs> that doesn't need to be in the episode, by the way. That's just me nattering. Sorry. Whoops. Oh, so we have been two quiz, one pod. Thank you very much for listening. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, we are at two quiz one pod, and we are also on Patreon. If you want to watch the Zoom conversation that this episode yes. was and any future videos, um, that's, that's on Maybe our... Maybe even put up a backdrop, so I would really suggest you do that. This is my therapy <laughs> Zoom setup. It's Amazing. a deer. Oh yeah, I only just noticed that. It makes me look like I've got ears. Sweet. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Um, cool. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. Um, please send us any tips tricks hacks and whatnot that you use for self-care and we'll compile them into a, a nice little doodly thing and do let us know if you've thought of anything that we've said is helpful because that would be good to know just oh yeah that would be nice just you validate know. us please <laughs> 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 kidding let us know if we're on the right track let us know if we're talking bollocks that's absolutely that's fine too all right thank you so much everybody and we Happy will lots. see you next week goodbye Ha ha ha.